This segment of JTV News is brought to you by Clarence Thomas Limited, Infinite Solutions, and Caribbean Sellers. The Jamaica Labour Party is not ruling out a negotiated position in its selection of a new leader for the party. This is among the suggestions being made as the party prepares for its upcoming conference in November and as JLP members continue to digest the shock announcement of party leader Bruce Golding's resignation. Dr. Christopher Tufton, one of the party's deputy leaders who is being touted as a possible candidate for the top post, has suggested that a negotiated position would be preferred in order to avoid any damage to the party's chances in the next general election. And while not ruling out the suggestion, JLP Chairman Mike Henry says any position arrived at would have to be based on the consensus of the party's decision makers. Education Minister Andrew Holness and Finance Minister Audley Shaw are the other possible candidates being touted to replace Prime Minister Bruce Golding when he steps down. But Mr Henry says so far no nominee has come forward. The British Overseas Territory Montserrat now has a new constitution and its Chief Minister Reuben Theodore Mead has been sworn in as the first ever Premier. Montserrat's Governor Adrian Davis noted that while the document was a work in progress, London was not at this time considering any amendments. This is in spite of the fact that opposition leader Donaldson Romeo and his opposition colleague, former Chief Minister Dr Lowell Lewis, have campaigned against the new constitution and have called for various changes to the document. Governor Davis noted, however, that Montserrat was ushering in a modern constitution for a modern country after the culmination of a long process of work and negotiation. Premier of the Cayman Islands, Makiva Bush, and other government leaders held a town hall meeting to inform residents about what the government and police are doing to combat the recent surge in crime and give community members a forum to express their views. The John A. Cumber Primary School Hall Wednesday was packed with about 100 people many with the same mindset. I'm a concerned citizen. i concerned about the things that is happening in our district right now. They're concerned about five murders in nine days, including three in their district of West Bay. And many want to know what can be done to stamp out crime. We need to see more presence of these officers, not just sit in their cars behind air condition, park at a specific location. Uh, we need to see them moving, we need to see them vision, we need to see them walking around, talking to the community. Many looked past just crime fighting, demanding social change regarding the way young people are treated. Not one social worker has come down there yet. There needs a lot of help because we as society have neglected their needs for years. In front of a crowd desperate for answers, the Honorable Premier, Makiva Bush, explained the additional resources, including nearly $5 million, government gave police. Various aspects are now instituted. The, co the Commission has promised us for more police on the streets, more vehicles, more equipment. Now we have to give him time to see where what is going to happen there. When asked how long the commissioner would be given to turn things around, the premier responded, that's the governor's call. An answer that bristled some who demand answers now. He cannot ignore the people of the Cayman Islands. Please. But with yet another man shot to death Thursday morning, they may be left with more questions and answers. Kevin Morales, Command 27. St. Kitts and Nevis Prime Minister Dr. Denzel Douglas says the people of Palestine have a right to self-determination. He said St. Kitts and Nevis continues to monitor the situation at the level of the United Nations, adding that the Security Council will be dealing with the request for statehood by the President Abbas of the Palestinian Authority. Antigua Prime Minister Baldwin Spencer has also formally recognized an independent Palestinian state. The Palestinian Authority has submitted a written application to Secretary General Ban Ki-moon and the UN Secretary Council. Spencer said the borders between the two countries should be based on the 1967 lines with mutually agreed swaps so that secure and recognized borders are established for both sides. Five other CARICOM member states have now recognized Palestine, including Belize, Guyana, Suriname, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett has revealed that Jamaica will be welcoming three new airlines to the island in time for the lucrative winter season at year-end. This news comes on the heels of British Airways' recent announcement that Britain's high air passenger duty was driving it to cut its Caribbean routes from 2012. Minister Bartlett said a number of new Latin American and European-based airlines are slated to begin flying into Jamaica before the end of this year. 
Bartlett stated that airlift is the centerpiece of Jamaica's efforts to get visitors to the island, and they continue to build partnerships with airlines across the globe, starting with Copa Airlines, which will connect Jamaica to 58 cities across North, South, and Central America. Then Satina, which will fly from Colombia to Jamaica, as well as Look Voyages, which will reconnect Jamaica to France for the first time in many years. Minister Bartlett said Jamaica has already secured over 1 million airline seats worldwide for the upcoming winter season. This is Walter Barrett for JTV News.